Hey, good morning, or good evening. Lord, I'm all messed up. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Success Life Live. My name is Eric Reed. I am your host. It is 7 p.m. on a Wednesday night, which means <clears throat> it's author talk. I love author talk. Author talk began because I was given the opportunity to read some of my fellow JMTers, books and manuscripts, and I thought, man, there's so much talent, so much information, so much value in some of these books that I really feel I need to get it out there, and I gotta share it. And so I asked, the, I asked my first author, I said, you know, could we, like, maybe hang out together? Like, could I bring you on camera and talk about your book? And that was a yes. And so we've had so many phenomenal authors participate and join us for Author Talk. Tonight is no exception. It is just, I'm going to totally geek out. I'm just telling you guys early and I'm telling you often, this is going to be phenomenal. We're going to go over lead like a superhero with my friend Sebastian Richard. He should be jumping in the room here in just a minute. Um, let me just tag him and make sure we're all good on technology. If everything is good, somebody shoot me a yes, shoot me a hi, shoot me. There's Sebastian. He's in the room. Sebastian, I just was telling everybody I'm getting ready to like totally geek out because you brought two of my favorite subjects together in one place. <laughs> Leadership and superheroes. See, I even dressed. I thought, ah, I got my, super, my Captain America t-shirt on, so I know it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let me just adjust this. I feel like I'm talking in directions. So I'm so excited to have you joining me. I'm gonna hit the join me button. You're gonna get an invitation. You're gonna jump on and say hello. Let's make this thing happen. Come on, technology, work with me. For some reason my finger is not finding you, Sebastian. Send me a request to join. Let me try it this way. There we go. I gotcha. Somehow I was just punching the wrong button at the wrong time in the wrong way. So as Sebastian logs in and joins up, everybody, welcome to this evening's author talk. It is, there he is. Good day. Hey, Eric. Wait a minute, what shirt are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> And the sad part is, I had to figure out which one I wanted to wear. Not just to put one on, but exactly like which one of them should I wear for today's author talk. The author of whoop, Lead Like a Superhero, What Pop Icons Can Tell Us About Leadership, Impactful Leadership. I got to tell you, what was your inspiration for the book? Well, obviously superheroes. Um, I grew up with them. I, uh, I, had a, I had a difficult life, I have to admit. Uh, I had a difficult childhood. So when I reached uh, my, teen, my teen years, um, I became a big fan of superheroes because they have the uh, knack, comic books, comic book movies, they have a knack to make you feel empowered. And when you don't feel empowered, when you are not having a great life and you are in uh, undergoing your teenage years and it's tough and uh, you're being bullied in school or whatnot, superheroes can really take you to a place where you feel empowered and inspired. And, and I have to tell you, um, so we just jumped right in. Anybody that didn't get a chance, I got to do the proper introduction. See, I knew I was going to geek out and totally mess up because this is so much about superheroes and I feel really bad about that. Sebastian Richards, it, you, if you didn't catch, he's Canadian. He's from that Canadian part. And you're near the French Canadian, yes? I am French Canadian. I, I was born in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, right now, I live in Prince Edward Island, the home of <laughs> Anne of Green Gables. But and I, I posted was, a trivia oh. fact the other day that I was the director of Anne of Green Gables, the musical here in Atlanta, Georgia, and was picked up by the Anne of Green Gables Society in Castlewood, whatever it is, wherever it is. Really? Yeah, I know. Little known fact. Who knew I knew <laughs> Anne of Green Gables so well? Wow, that's cool. We have a lot of things in common then, but not, not just the t-shirt and the geekness, but the, the Anne of Green Gable connection as well. I would have to say that she, in, in her own right, is a superhero. She has inspired a lot of people, that's for sure. So, so you live in Prince Edward Island. You end every sentence with a question mark. That's just the way it sounds. For you people that are from the South, you're going to think he's asking you a lot of questions. The truth is, that's the way Canadians talk. You know, everything goes up at the end. And I can say that as I joke because I'm from Minnesota. 
And most people confuse Minnesota for Canada. It's true because it's cold, right? Oh, yeah. And we That's what Americans... So, so... Whatever we ask Americans about Canada, they all say, it's cold up there, it's cold up there. That's all we hear. <laughs> and, and the answer is always, sure, yeah, you bet. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so leading in, you're a coach, you're a speaker, you're a member of the John Maxwell team. What have I left out so people can get to know you? Uh, my greatest passion is the Holy Scriptures, and uh, for a good six to, to maybe ten months now, I don't like. I think it's more like eight months or so. Uh, my wife and I have been podcasting. We have our own podcast where I get to uh, enjoy my love of teaching um, Christian entrepreneurs how to better their lives and their businesses. So uh, we have a lot of fun doing that. My wife is also a JMT uh, coach. So we do it together and we have a lot of fun and it really helps us to connect as a couple and to enjoy building something of significance together. So we're having fun doing that. So, and I, and I love it because as entrepreneurs, sometimes we feel like our faith needs to stay at home and not in the office. Or sometimes I think I've seen some that it's become such, that there's that delicate balance between making it part of your logo versus making it part of your company culture. And I love working with faith-based organizations because they understand it's the culture, it's the DNA, it's the value system. It's not just the sticker on the side of the company van. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, it, it's been a struggle for me when I first started to, to know what identity I wanted to have as, as a coach and as a teacher and as a leadership trainer. Uh, even in the book, A Lead Like a Superhero, I'm sure you've noticed there's some, uh, I, I refer to God, I refer to the Bible, but I do it in such a way that uh, it's going to appeal to a large audience. It's not going to offend anyone. They're just going to see it as a point of reference. Uh, so it was, it's kind of the delicate thing. But when I first started, I went secular. I went full secular because I, I wanted to make sure I wouldn't offend anyone. But then I realized I was miserable. So I was like, <laughs> okay, this is, not, this, this is working for other people. It's just not working for me. So I had to uh, go back to the drawing board and look what I wanted to be. And I realized that faith had to be a huge part of my business or else I was not going to be happy with it. So uh, I made the decision and then my wife joined me. And, and so we, we did it together. And faith uh, has a huge place uh, at Thriving on Purpose. I, I think that's phenomenal. I was on a coaching call with a client earlier today and I was reading over a business proposal and I was like, I don't hear you in this. I don't hear you in this business proposal because they had tried to make it what everybody would have expected a business proposal to look like. Yeah. And I was like, you're asking me, this arbitrary third person bank, in this case, the role I was playing to invest, but I don't see anything unique or different that makes me want to invest in you because at the end of the day, no matter what the business plan is, I got to know the person. And so I think you're right. When you build a business, if you leave too much of you out, it's bound to fail because your passion isn't in it and nobody can connect. So, yeah, good on you. Eric, good on you, you. you know this as well as I do. When we start out as speakers, one of the first things that we're told is be yourself. Uh, don't uh, go on stage trying to be someone else. Be yourself. So uh, you get that repeated over and over again when you first start out. And the tendency is to not be yourself because you're nervous. You, you're, you're unsure of yourself and you, you want to make sure that you get those customers that you do like, know, and trust you. So sometimes you fall for the trap of trying to give them what you think they want instead of just being you and just like, and, and attracting who is going to be like you. Very much, very much. Well, I am so psyched. I've got like my whole, you can't see it. It's down here. It's down here in the camera. I got a whole table of toys. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which ones belong to me and which ones belong to my son, but I thought we'd do this in a different way. Normally I have all kinds of notes and I did highlight lots of notes and sticky them, but I thought, you know, let's do lead like a superhero. Got to get the book cover in um, a little bit different. So what I have are a few superheroes. And as I bring the superhero in, you get to tell us their leadership style. And then a little bit about it. So who goes first? Who goes first? <laughs> we'll start with the easy and the obvious because. Um... Spider-Man. Yeah, I love Spider-Man. See, 
He's in the book, but a lot of people, when you talk about Spider-Man and leadership, they don't really see it. First of all, because he's so young, right? And especially now in the recent Marvel movies, they've been making him younger. I know, it's like he's 12. <laughs> I think the next movie is going to be like maybe eight years old. You know, <laughs> it's going down and down. Uh, but when I grew up, Spider-Man was around maybe 21. And then they started going down in age and down in age, uh, where he's more in high school age now. Um, so for, for him to be a leader, it's kind of hard to, to grasp or to conceive. Even himself, when you read uh, Sp Spider-Man comics, he always uh, calls himself the lone wolf, the guy who doesn't play well with others, not because he doesn't like others, but because he's either too intimidated by them or he feels awkward in a group setting or whatnot. So Spider-Man leaders, their greatest strength is their, the fact that they're servant-hearted leaders. Uh, if you look at Peter Parker, the character in the comics, he decided to embrace a life of responsibility, come what may, right? Like uh, when Uncle Ben dies, he, he makes that vow that no matter what, he will be responsible. He knows that with great power comes great responsibility. It's a lesson he learned from his uncle. And he decides to run with that. And with that comes bumps, bruises, heartbreaks with uh, the, the women he, that, he, that he likes or dates or loves. or uh, His friends reject him. Sometimes he gets his friend like a, a Harry, for example, when he found out who he was. He hated him afterwards. Uh, so he's had so many problems that came from his decision to embrace a life of responsibility, and yet he does it anyway. So he's got this attitude of, I'm going to serve the people with my gift no matter what. And that, I think, is the greatest strength of the Spider-Man leader, even if he's awkward in a group setting, even if he cracks jokes when it's not really time sometimes, even if he's unsure of himself at times, the Spider-Man leader shines because he's a servant at heart. I love that. All right, Spider-Man, two points for him. <laughs> All right. Actually, in the book, I don't know if you remember this. Actually, in the book, I compared myself to the Spider-Man leader. I said it's the one I identified with the most. Well, I, I, we're, we're saving that one. Um, <laughs> Now, I know there's many variations, but I went with the classic. You do have a lot of toys, don't you? <laughs> I had to, so I love it was it. funny because I was like, no, that one's not in the book. That one's not in the book. I was putting some of them away because they're not in the book. Well, as you can see, I, I mean, I'm wearing a, a Captain America shirt. I'm a big fan of Captain America. Uh, so what is the Iron I, Man? I, I, see, that's the thing with Iron Man is... He's kind of the opposite of Captain America on many fronts. Uh, oh. Captain America is from the past and he's got old school values. Iron Man embraces the future and technology. And he's, got, he's more of a liberal thinker and a free spirited uh, leader. So it's very different from my favorite. Uh, I actually, I have two favorites in the book which are Captain America and Optimus Prime. So for me, it was kind of hard to, to write about Iron Man. When I wrote the chapter on Iron Man, I was like, I have to take him. I have to put him in the book. He's too much of a great leader to be left out. But at the same time, I had problems with the persona of Tony Stark, not because I don't enjoy watching his movies, like a Robert Downey Jr. does a great job. And it's just so enjoyable to watch him on the big screen. And, and even the, the superhero Iron Man is just fascinating with the armor that just pops on and just like, mm -hmm. just like builds up. The, the new Iron Man is. Just... That's just, that's great. He's the coolest superhero. But personality wise, leadership wise, he's not my cup of tea. But I still had to take the best of him and put that on paper. So that was a bit of a challenge. But then I started thinking about what he brought to the table. And you know what? Iron Man leaders are world changers, and that's their greatest gift. Really? They're innovators. They're bold. They're, in many cases, they're geniuses. They're super smart, and they, they bring new innovative ideas to the table and change the course of history in many cases. So that's what makes the, the greatest strength of the Iron Man leader, and I couldn't just leave him out of a book on leadership because his impact is just too great. I love that because, yeah, Tony Stark and Iron Man, 
I'm like you. I'm like, yeah, it's just an outfit. It's just a costume. So he's not like really a superhero by my definition. But when you bring it that way, is that he's not afraid to embrace risk in technology. He's not there you go. afraid to go where no other man has gone before, so to speak. Um, he dives in. And the other thing, when you see the Iron Man, especially in the Avengers series um, under Marvel 10, is that he gives his gifts away too. There's always somebody yes. getting the benefit of what he learned. You know, yes. He makes a new Spider-Man suit. He creates counterparts to Iron Man. He makes sure that everybody benefits somehow from what he creates. There you go. And uh, he's a very generous soul. I mean, uh, on the surface, he's a womanizer and, a, and an alcoholic, and he's got his, his inner demons that he's carrying with him that kind of make him a flawed character. Uh, and that's what I kind of didn't like about Iron Man, like a little too liberal for my taste, because uh, I, I, I just preferred Captain America as more like uh, strong morals, and so I, I identified with that more. So the, the character of Tony Stark is like, I kind of had a problem with that, but you cannot deny his leadership ability. When he's doing the thing that he's best at, he Ooh, cannot be replaced. A I mean, on a team like the Avengers, he cannot be replaced. He's, he's, a, he's the vital cog of the Avengers. So, so um, who's next? Who's next? All right, we're going this way. I didn't have a full-size version, but uh, this is the Batman Lego. <laughs> I mean, as, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to confess here. When I was a kid, up to when I was about, I would say, up to when I was about 30 years old, Superman was my favorite. Oh. But then you reach the age, the ripe old age of 30, <laughs> and you have more experience, you get, you, you understand life better, you know yourself better. And then, all of a sudden, when you get older, Batman makes a heck of a lot more sense. And, uh, well, then help me, because I've never connected to Batman. I just thought he was like the one-off that didn't belong with any of the others. Batman is truly, I mean, when, when leadership, if we're going to talk about, you know, we, we hear this in the field of leadership oftentimes, before you lead others, you have to lead yourself, Right self-leadership is the hardest one to master, you know, kicking okay. yourself in the butt in the morning, getting out of bed early, doing what you got to do, eating that frog early in the morning to get the things rolling. That's self-discipline. And I think that Batman of all superheroes is the best example of a self-disciplined person, of, a, of someone who is going to do the 500 push-ups. He's going to do them, you know, even if he's got a busted elbow uh, because of a fight earlier uh, the, the, in, during the night that he got into. He's still going to do the training because he wrote it down on paper that he was going to do it. So that's what I love about the Batman is that come hell or high water, he will not stray from what he's going to do. What he set out to do, he's going to do it no matter what. And, and that makes him sometimes a bit of a jerk to work with <laughs> when you're in the when you work for a batman lead, if you're in an office setting and your boss happens to be a batman leader chances are he won't be liked however no one will be able to deny his contribution they're all going to respect him they might not like him but they're all going to respect him they're all going to say about that guy or that woman you know what so and so, we don't like him, but he gets things done. That's I like Batman. That. I like. I hadn't thought of that as the Batman, um, and I love the fact that you call him the Batman because you're you're a purist. I just call him Batman. Um, <laughs> I read too many comics, I guess. He calls himself the Batman. Did you know? I know. I am the Batman, and I just call him yeah. Batman. So generic. I think that's. I think that shows how much of a geek you are. And if somebody's jumping in late, let me. Oh, here go my glasses. Um, we're going over to lead like a superhero, what pop icons can teach us about impactful leadership. And what my friend Sebastian Richard did was he went through and he identified, my son corrected me, they're not all Marvel Comics heroes. 
Um, he identified those pop icons, those superheroes from our childhood, identified their leadership quality, and then showed what they would look like in the current workplace, and then how we can either emulate them or work within that leadership trait. And so I love the book, like I said, because it's totally geek out city on superheroes. So we're going to go with uh, another one of my, okay, this is another one of my favorites. Whoops. Wolverine. It's Wolverine, okay, yeah. I know, it's really hard to tell in the Lego format. Right? Yeah, he's a bit small. When they're small, just pop them in closer so I can see <laughs> what I'm looking at. <laughs> you feel like you're on Quiz Bowl, huh? Identify the <laughs> zero. But you know what, Eric? I'm having a great time. I mean, this is all. This is my cup of tea right there. I got there. like I'm, 30 of these, but I didn't bring them all out. So you should I'm good. geeking out just like you right now. So I'm just having a ball. This is the best time. <laughs> so Wolverine, you know, when it, like you talk about Wolverine and leadership in the same sentence and people are going to go like, what? I mean, the guy who slices and dice, the guy who slices and dices people and just goes into a berserker rage. That guy is a leader. And yes, he is. And there's a lot to Wolverine. And what I like about the character is that there's a lot of depth to that character. Although when you look at a movie with Hugh Jackman in the role, uh, you, you, you might miss that. But when you understand the character from a comics point of view and you understand that he was born in the 1800s, so he's very long lived, his healing factor has a lot to do with the fact that he's had this long life. But he's, he's been around the world so many times and he's, he's been in many different cultures and, and he's, got, he's gotten all those years to learn all kinds of first of languages. Uh, people don't know this about Wolverine. He knows, I think he speaks, I, I, I forget how many I wrote in the book, of, but I've done the research. I think it's something like seven languages. Anyway, he speaks a lot of languages. He's super smart. Um, also in the book, I mentioned an example from the comics uh, in which he's uh, doing something. Uh, he's using his brain at the same time as going through a, a training routine in, that's very intensive. And the guy who's monitoring his results is saying that what he just accomplished is he did some Olympic level athlete skill stuff all the while using his brain in a way that would enable him to beat a world champion at chess. So they're giving this example of Wolverine, which is something that's completely off our radar when we look at the character on screen and he's just so violent and, and just aggressive. But the guy has got brains and he's got skills. But that's not the, what I like about the Wolverine leader the most. What I like the most about the Wolverine leader and why I put him in the book to, to the shock of many, because a lot of people were like, what, Wolverine leader? Yes, yes. And here's what he does better than anyone. There are these leaders in life or even in business or in different settings. When a crisis occurs, sometimes everybody's going to be at a loss. Even the one who was named leader, even the positional mm -hmm. leader sometimes will be, what are we going to do? Everything's falling apart. And then you get this guy that you never saw coming, that's been on your team for a long time, that all of a sudden stands up and says, listen, bub, this is what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it this way. <laughs> and, and then they all look at him and say, well, we're not gonna do that, that's suicide. He says, watch me, and then he does it, and it works. And everybody's like, they start following him, why? Because he's proven that his idea was worth following he's done the job he, he he went in the fray and did it with guts and at the end with glory but he didn't care about the glory he just did it with guts because it needed to be done when nobody else had the gall to get up and do it so these guys the or and these gals they get up and do the thing that nobody thought of that nobody saw coming that everybody thought it was a lost cause and they turn the ship around and then all of a sudden you're like, where did he come from? How, how come we never recognize this person as gifted or helpful or useful before this crisis hit? That's what I like about Wolverine. And what I like about the Wolverine character is too, once it's done, he moves out of center street. He's yeah. like, did what I needed to do. I'm gonna, and often in the movie, you'll see that after the big moment, after the big victory, after he's like the last man really standing, he exits. 
he goes off. Yeah, he doesn't. To be he doesn't want the limelight. Like. Yeah, he's like, look, I need time as a leader to center myself, to get back into focus, to to close out the battle. And as John Maxwell would say, no experiences or experiences are useless unless you take time to reflect. He's a very reflective leader in the sense of like, okay, what did we just go through? How did we get in this mess? How did we get out of this mess? Let me go out and figure this out. As opposed to standing there waiting for the applause and the girl kisses and all of that. He's just like, exactly what I'm about. He doesn't care about that. He just wants it done. Yeah. I, 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 love, I love that character. Um, Me too. He doesn't love a good pair of whoosh, slaps. <laughs> exactly. All right, we got another big one. I know he wasn't in the book, but I'm sure you can you you can improvise on this one. Oh, sorry. Thor, yeah. That's funny that you show me Thor because recently I did a promo for the book, uh, Lead Like a Superhero. And it's a, it's a short uh, five-minute video I did when the Aquaman movie was about to come out. Ah. I went and, and, and I did a video promoting Aquaman, not just the movie, but basically I was saying, look, people thought I was crazy to pick Aquaman over Thor for a chapter in my book. And that's exactly what happened in the book is when I, I wanted to take a, a chapter where I would... Uh, analyze these leaders that are given the keys, so to speak, of a huge empire or a big business, okay? Ooh, so they, okay. They, they might not look ready. ready. Uh, sometimes it's uh, junior, you know? Daddy's been operating or mommy and daddy have been operating this big empire and junior's winning in the wings and nobody thinks he's ready. And all of a sudden, daddy makes the move, says you're taking over. And everybody's looking at this guy and saying, this isn't going to work. He's not going to be able to pull it off. And then he pulls it off and they have to eat crow. So that was, the, that was where I was going with this. And I was hesitating at the time. Funny story. I go to my wife. I'm like, who should I take for this type of leader who, who inherits a huge empire? Because as we know, Thor is the god of Asgard, right? But his father, Odin, is the one in charge. So he's the one who gives them the reins eventually. But so is Aquaman. Aquaman is, is, is the same kind of leader. He inherits Atlantis. He becomes king of Atlantis, and he doesn't feel ready for it. And uh, recently, we've had, in the last year, we've had Black Panther. And when I was growing up and when I was writing the book, Black Panther just wasn't on the radar. He was not a popular character. And Marvel changed all that. They did an amazing movie with this, and they brought him out. Uh, and, and now it was funny because when I was gathering my toys, my son said, you got to take Black Panther, because right now everything is Black Panther. I said, he's not in the book. He said, well, then it's a dumb book. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you see, so you have these three guys, and they all inherited a, a big responsibility. Uh, Black Panther is king of Wakanda. His father dies. He takes over. Aquaman becomes king of Atlantis, and Thor is the god uh, of thunder and, and the leader of Asgard. It's another dimension, if you will. So all these guys have a huge responsibility, and they kind of inherit, inherit it from their father. So we and would call that positional leadership. Yeah, it's positional leadership, and they, they're not necessarily ready for it. So they kind of have to learn as they go. And they have detractors. There's, there's people around them that are just waiting to see them fail. So the, not only is there that kind of pressure, but there's also the pressure of the legacy that they, they have on their shoulder. And they, they don't want to fail, you know, whoever put them in charge. And, and it's not only daddy or mommy. Sometimes it's just you're this guy who got out of school. You've got the big diploma, but you didn't get that running start yet. And a, a headhunter finds you and he's like, it's you that I want to run my big, you know, corporation and whatnot. And so the guy comes in, he's like 25, 26. Everybody's like taken aback. And uh, there's even people in the company that thought they would get the promotion. And now it's this new kid that comes in and he, he has the whole responsibility of the big ship. So they all look at him and say, what's he gonna do? He's gonna fail, you know, or they, they're waiting for him to fail. And then he pulls it off or she pulls it off. What I that's love about that was Thor and Black Panther. Panther. So that's what, that's the, the dichotomy between Thor and Aquaman that was kind of a... Uh... 
Well, we don't know if he's pulled it off. The story's not finished yet. <laughs> but <laughs> did you, like, did you see the movie? Thor and Black Panther, they, they sort of, they accept their title, so to speak, but they don't act on it. And then a crisis comes when whatever they've been given is put in jeopardy, whether it's a planet or a kingdom or an underwater city, so to speak. It's like, you don't understand. If you don't step up, we die. Exactly. And then they're like, I, ha I mean, as much as I don't want this, I'm the guy that has to do it. And that's when they get called into their, their, their power, so to speak. And I think sometimes that as leaders, we're given positionals and we, we wait for that crisis to step into. And that's a really bad time to learn leadership. Is it, it can be really days. rough. Um, but it's sometimes the place that we actually show our best leadership because True. it's passion-based. And so I always see them as very passion-based leaders because they're connected like, to their kingdom, to their planet, to their underwater city. Yeah. So my wife at the beginning when I was writing the book, she said, why didn't you pick Thor? Because <laughs> I, like, I prefer Aquaman. Sue me. <laughs> We'll give you Aquaman. Um, so we have, <laughs> I've got another one. Geeking out with the classic. Eyes. The classic, the classic. I mean, this is the, if there were, if there was such a thing as a king of superheroes, Superman would be it. He's almost oh, royalty in the comics. Oh, such a world. title. So the Superman leader, I mean, the name says it all, right? When you have, when you're working for a Superman leader, you look at them go, whether it's a woman or a man, and it can fit, it can be any, any gender doesn't matter here. When you look at them go, you're like, how do they do it? <laughs> it's like <laughs> high energy, high accomplishments, all doing all that with a smile, being able to uh, give the pat on the shoulders of, of their teammates and everybody. So they're encouraging at the same time. It seems like they have it all. The only flaw in the Superman leader is that oftentimes they are so gifted, so energetic. They have so much to give. The only flaw they have sometimes they try to do it all themselves. So they don't delegate as much as they should. Oh. And, and you see that played out in all the Superman movies because there's always that one moment where he has to save Lois Lane or stop the nuclear warhead. You know, there's always yeah. that moment where he's got to do one or the other and he's like, but I can't do both. And it's almost yeah. like, well, why not? You've been doing it all, all along. You never took time to build up your, your, your superhero helping team. And I think sometimes as leaders, those superhero leaders, those Superman leaders never build up the resource team around them. They never build up their pool of, of, of helpers. And you don't see him in the Avengers because Superman just doesn't fit in that way. He doesn't have people that he calls on the phone and says, come help me. Well, the reason you don't see him on the Avengers is because the Avengers is Marvel. And he's with I, the okay, Justice so League. So DC Comics, he did do the Justice League. <laughs> but he only teamed up with Wonder Woman, and there's reasons I'm sure that we don't know. But yeah, I don't <laughs> see the Superman leader, like you said, his weakness is he always does it on his own and never takes time to build up others. Yeah, but but there's like if you if you have if you have the opportunity to work with a Superman leader, you're blessed. I mean, if they can overcome this, if you would call it a weakness. You know, the, the ability to delegate more and build up more of a solid uh, team instead of trying to do it all themselves. Uh, it is, in spite of that, there's still like, there are people that you're going to love to work for because they basically have all the skill set that you would want in a leader. Uh, high accomplishment, smarts, encouraging. They, 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 they mesh with all of these things at once. Good. So, I have one more toy, but before we go to the one more toy, so I wanted you to know this isn't just for your show, because this is my cell phone, and this is my cell phone case. <laughs> it's the um, Infinity War collage, so to speak, which <laughs> I, I love it traded out because before it was, you know, 
I, my son takes all my old phone cases, not that he has a phone, but he just likes the fact that it's either Captain America, something Marvel, something DC. So I totally agree that our pop icons, our superheroes, our comic book characters, you know, for little boys, and not to degenderize it and say that girls can't find superheroes, but speaking from a perspective that don't, that is mine, which is from a, a boy perspective, seeing these characters, seeing these men step up, because they, they are predominantly, step up and be leaders in a way that I could meet with them quietly, you know, with my little comic book and my tree house kind of thing, and see these examples of leadership was, I don't know if I really internalized it, but we've all done it. We've all, you know, I said when, um, when, I just forgot his name. The creator. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be discounted. Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Uh, Stan Lee. I don't know why Stu was stuck in my head. When Stan Lee passed, I had posted that for every little boy that had put out a cape and any little girl who had put tin foil around her wrist and went like that, he allowed us to believe that we were bigger than who we looked like in the mirror. He taught us that in each of us there is that. You don't know, you could wake up tomorrow and you could be Aquaman, you could be Superman, you might find out you're really from another planet. And I love the fact, <clears throat> like with um, a lot of the superheroes, when they became of age is when their power emerged. You know, some of them didn't know it as kids or it was too, I love the fact that he gave me that gift to be able to say, you know what, I'm not just Eric. I'm Eric the Avenger, I'm Eric the Crusher. I'm like, like we made up superpowers. And I'll tell you, my son's not listening. He thinks I'm a superhero. I told him that I was one of the original superheroes, but when I had a son, I had to choose between being a dad and staying as a superhero. So I gave up being a superhero, but I still have some of my powers. Oh, that's and awesome. One of them is mind reading, which means I can tell when he's lying. <laughs> 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 and the other is I can like grab and do like the Hulk squeeze and like just have him crush. So he's like, are you oh, yeah. really a superhero? I'm like, I'm not allowed to be a superhero anymore because I have to take care of you. So anytime we go to watch a superhero movie or a Marvel movie or whatever, he'll ask me like, so was Hulk really like that before? I was like, dude, it's not like we really went to school. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it because it gives us a place to connect. But I also have taken the from your book, and what you opened my eyes to is when we're watching Infinity Wars, when we're watching any kind of Marvel superhero character, DC comic, whatever, I now see that there's a leadership lesson. There's an ability for me to go, why do you think he did that? Why would somebody, and, and to draw in, him into seeing more than the flash and bang of the comic, but to understand the leader, the person, the character that the comic book represents because Stan Lee didn't write those without having reference points. He saw these people in his life and he just exploded them into a more colorful version so we could all relate. And so, I mean, the world is a better place because of Stan Lee. Now people may disagree with me, I really don't care because he taught little kids, little boys, how to dream to be big men. And your yeah, book, I, I think it's, I think your book really echoes that with like, look, these aren't just characters in a book. These are qualities of leadership that we can develop, that we can create, that we can bring into our lives or recognize or in our lives and tap into that superhero around us. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that for me, that was the driving force behind it, because I, in hindsight, looking back, I was like, you know what? All these years I was reading Superman, it really forged a big part of my character, who I chose to become. So whether we want to admit it or not, I mean, I'm a Christian. I read the Bible. I love God and I love Jesus Christ. But at the same time, comic books, they, they kind of show me how to be in with people, you know? They, they I mean, me Moses, Moses had his superhero moments, but yeah, like he's but, not. But like that was Captain, so long ago, you he's, know? He's not like Iron Man or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't there. I mean, I, when the, the, the Red Sea split, I mean, it must have been amazing. That must have been more amazing than Iron Man. But, you know, you know what I'm saying? 
there's just something about the relatableness. Uh, can we say that word? How you we relate. make up words here all the time, so go ahead. I like, I like making up words sometimes, it's fun. But um, you can just relate with them. See, like for someone who's more somber or more of a loner, they might read Batman comics and really identify with the character. Uh, for someone who's a little bit maybe awkward in their teenage years, they might read Spider-Man and be like, man, he's so much like me when he's Peter Parker and I, I really identify with that. And, and for someone who just want to feel empowered, Superman's going to do it for them. They're just going to look at him go and be like, I want to be that type of person because Superman's not just the guy who flies and, and lifts mountains. He's also the guy who's going to take the time to uh, take a cat out of a tree for a little girl. You know, we saw that in the, the first movie. So for me, that, that had a huge impact. I was like, wow, here's this guy who can make the earth spin backwards, who actually takes time out of his day to go take a pet cat out of a tree for a little girl to see her smile again. So and when, when you understand that, you're like, maybe I can live differently. Maybe I can do things differently. And I think that's the key. When you look at all of the superheroes, all of them, they, they weren't, I mean, they weren't perfect from the start. I mean, Batman lost his parents. Superman is an adopted orphan. Um, Peter Parker lost his uncle, we, you know, lost his parents, was involved. Like, everybody doesn't have a perfect life. Some of them have very dark internal feelings. Yeah. And so as a kid sitting there reading a comic book, when you can see somebody that's like, yeah, they have sad days, they have bad days, they have broken moments, they have loneliness, they have sadness, they're adopted, they're orphans, they're poor, they're whatever. And yet look what they accomplish in the world. I think it's a really quiet way of offering a kid a chance to say, okay, maybe I can be, maybe I'm allowed to be sad and a superhero. Maybe there you I'm go. allowed to be adopted and save the world. There you go. And, and, and for the case of Oracle in the book, and a lot of people might not be familiar with who Oracle is. Oracle is basically Batgirl after the Joker shot her and she became paralyzed from the waist down. When that happened, bad girl, Barbara Gordon, decided to become a computer hacker and she became a, a key cog in the superhero community where she was this go-to person for all kinds of, inf like a, an information broker that, that she would tap through online and she reinvented herself. But you were talking about loss earlier, uh, how superheroes have experienced loss and all that and how they're imperfect. And I think that was the genius of Stan Lee when he decided to uh, create Spider-Man, th that's the thing that he wanted to come through in this new character. He says, I wanna create a superhero with problems. Cause all the superheroes so far, they don't have any problems. They can, they can fly to the moon and back and they, they're super powerful. I wanna create this guy who's got these amazing powers, but at the same time, he's got personal problems. So then he created Peter Parker and it changed the superhero genre, the comic book world forever. When Stan Lee w went ahead with Spider-Man, I mean, so many kids could identify with this guy. I just think it's funny that Stan Lee considers Spider-Man like his greatest superhero. Like this is like, to him, this is what he wanted all along was a Spider-Man. Whereas I, on the other hand, think that the greatest of leaders and superheroes is not his his shield is over on my desk it fell off is captain america what is captain america's le the best of the best what is his leadership quality yes <laughs> coming from a canadian wearing a captain america shirt <laughs> i love cap i'm wearing his shirt and it's funny because we didn't talk about it before before we went live no. you took the captain america shirt and i took the captain america shirt because hey we're talking superheroes and leadership and cap is all about leadership and not just leadership but intense integrity if there is such a oh. thing intense annoyingly integrity. so <laughs> and i just love i just love the character um there's something about steve rogers that um for me is like this, this kid who just had so much determination about joining, wanting to, to join the army to do what was right. 
you know, he set out on this with this goal in mind. He's like, I want to do what's right. He's kind of sickly. He's weak. He can't really make it. And, but at the same time, during his training, when you, you, when you watch the first movie, uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, he shows some things that others don't show. So they see that leadership come through and they're like, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't run as fast or climb, as, you know, run as fast. He's not as strong as the others, but man, he makes up for it in character. And Cap is all about character. And character is who you are when nobody's looking. That's character. And Captain America is the same when he's looked at by 500 people as he is when he's alone in his apartment, same guy. Uh, so he's got this incredible uh, virtue about him and morals and, and ideals. And he's a workhorse. I mean, he's not gonna, he's not gonna take a team and say, okay, guys, go. No, he's gonna say, okay, guys, let's go. So he's with that. them in the thick of the action. He's in the trenches. And that's where he wants to be. So yes, he, he gives the orders and he organizes everything and he's a great strategist and he's got this amazing brain when it comes to, uh, to knowing what, what to do in what situation. And he thinks fast, thinks on his feet, but he's there, he's with them. And that's like, if you've worked for someone like that, any, any setting, okay? Whether it's in a, a corporate setting or church setting or anywhere else, when you work with someone like that, what happens? Here's what happens. You want to give your 100%. You want to sweat as much as they sweat because anything less, you feel like you're dishonoring them because you love them and respect them so much. You don't want to let them down. I love that. I, ah, see, that's why he's my hero. Um, and my son will always ask, he's like, well, who's the best superhero? And you can't say Captain America again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't even know why we have this discussion. It's always Captain America. That's like going to be it forever. But I think you summarize it so well in the book, and as you just did, is that he, yeah, he was the 120-pound weakling with the flat feet and the asthma and, you know, couldn't climb the rope ladder, but he would not, I mean, like, cheated his way into the system because he wanted to do what was called to be done. He was like, I have to do this. You don't understand this vehicle that I'm given to do it in is not defining how much I need to get it done. And I so admire because as a coach, I often work with people and they're like, well, you know, you don't understand. I don't have this and I don't have that. And if only I was this and if only I was that, if I was younger, taller, faster, skinnier, fatter, more, less. And Captain America was like, I don't have all that, but I have this burning passion and I'm going to go after it until something stops me or until something supports me. And in doing that, like you said, they're like, okay, we need you to come over here and help us with this other thing. It's not what you thought you were going to get to do. It's not the direction you thought you were going to get to serve. Could you come over here? And when you hear that dialogue, it was very much like, so how is this going to help the country? How is this going to be of Like, how is this going to finish my vision? You may have moved me from one field to another field, but I need to know that I'm still playing for the same end game. And there you go. As he knew that, look, you're not going to be in the army. You're going to become the army. He's like, there oh, you I'm go. In. I get to finish my mission. I get to finish my vision. I get to finish my goal. I just get to do it in a different way. And, and you know, there's a saying, I think it was Abraham Lincoln. I'm not sure if it was Abraham Lincoln, but I, I know I've read this somewhere. If you want to test a man's character, give him power. <laughs> And that's what I love about Steve Rogers is the before and the after, same guy. Only yeah, nobody, after ever was... tempts, nobody ever tries to tempt Captain America to go into nope. the bad side playing on the dark team. They just look at him and it's like, give up. Don't even try. Yes, I, it's not worth it. I won't even try to bribe him. <laughs> it could be tempted. <laughs> So I have like 20 others in the other room. I had to whittle them down. I didn't bring you Black Panther. I didn't bring you Groot because I knew that he was sort of an, an, an odd character. Who else did I leave out? I left out Ant-Man. Was Ant-Man Ant wasn't in the book? Ant-Man wasn't in the book. Uh, he's a bit kind of like the Spider-Man leader. 
Ant-Man, a bit awkward in a group setting. You, you, we see him like <laughs> struggled with his relationships and he makes jokes when it's not time and he, he's, he's awkward, but he's got a heart in the right place. He wants to do the right thing. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. So, and then Hulk, does he qualify? No, unfortunately he doesn't because in Hulk mode, he's all about brute strength and he doesn't lead he just smashes right it's, there's no uh Smash Hulk. <laughs> it's just like it's just like using a, a <laughs> an engine of destruction right he has his, his usefulness mind you he's very useful in, in in certain activities when the avengers go out but um for leadership he just now and there's others i mean i only picked 12 including so there's the a chap there's a volume two coming out there won't be a volume two maybe <laughs> uh, for now there's no volume two coming out uh i thought maybe someday we could analyze super villains <laughs> but i'm maybe not gonna you should go just there. do a podcast where once a week you introduce a superhero and their quality there's optimus prime that you didn't talk about and he's my favorite personally you know you put him in the book and i was like optimus prime oh man optimus oh, prime. and like i really like and i think he's the last one isn't he yeah, he's the last one, and he's not Marvel, and he's not DC, but I grew up with him, and I was like, I can't I leave him out just, because I, so when it comes to that, because I read it and I understood it from the book, but not from the author perspective. Well, I grew up with Optimus Prime. I watched the the cartoons on television, and uh, uh, Optimus Prime, Peter Cullen, who voiced him from early on up to today did such an amazing job at portraying this leader who is, how he puts it, strong enough to be gentle. And for many kids my age, uh, I was around 12 years old at the time, for many kids my age, he was like a father figure. Hmm. And I didn't have the best dad growing up. So for me to see that 30 foot tall robot act with such compassion, kindness, smarts, and power. To me, that was like, I want to be like that when I grow up, but I don't want, I won't be 30 feet tall and I won't be all shiny and I won't transform into a truck. But the character, to me, in the book, he's the most gifted leader. Uh, and, that, and I am biased because I did watch the cartoons growing up. But the way he, you know, John Maxwell says, uh, before a leader asks for a hand, he needs to touch a heart. Okay. Well, Optimus Prime, that defines him exactly. Oh, That's exactly I didn't see that coming. I love that. Well, in our so, house, we have Voltron instead of Optimus Prime, which is kind of like the same, like the Thundercats and all of that. Different version, but yeah, we went through the Same Optimus era. Prime. Yeah, we went through that. And like I said, my son, thank God, he um, shares my love of superheroes and geeking out on them. And I get to teach him leadership lessons. I get to teach him manhood and qualities and characters that I want him to grow up and have because of our friends. See, and the sad part is, here's the sad thing. This just is another geek out moment. So when I was collecting these and I said, where's Captain America? He said, which one? He was like, which one? <laughs> I was like, so you have more than one. Like, we have four of these, but you know, he changes the uniform a lot. So we have like every variation in all four uniforms. Okay. I was like, I just want Captain America. He's like, yeah, but which one, Dad? It's like, let's just relax, okay, kid? So um, it's kind of nice that we get to geek out about our superheroes together. I truly, like I said, when I got the book, I knew it was going to be good. First, you got the Batman cape on the cover and everything. I think, yeah, it's the Batman cape. It feels very Batman-esque. It, it's Superman. Here, here's, it's, Superman, it's, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the, first, the top part is Captain America's scale armor. Ah. The second part is Superman's cape. And the last part is Wonder Woman's shorts. I see it now. And I think you did a really, like I said, I love the, I love the book. I absolutely, I've got so many highlighted lessons, but what it sort of was fun to do is 
take leadership out of being that stuffy corporate structure, you know, love John Maxwell, but sometimes four John Maxwell books in a row can get a little mind, mind numbing. What was fun was to go back into my childhood, revisit with my superheroes, see them as leaders, see them as men of quality and women of quality. Ladies, there are a couple ladies in here, so don't feel bad. Um, they're in here. And really look at them from a new light of like, okay, what would it look like if I was Captain America today? What would my leadership, what would my agenda be? What would, how would I reflect my Captain America quality in this or my Spider-Man quality or my Cap, um, Iron Man quality? And I love the idea of like, okay, I want to be a forward thinker. I want to be an innovator. I want to be somebody who takes the risk to try something that's never been done before. Who's my role model? I got Iron Man. There you go. All the money, all the girls, all the chicks. All right, cool. I can do that. I want to be somebody that stands up in the middle of a conversation and says, no, 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 no. That's not who we are. That's not what we're about. That's not why we play. Oh, yeah, I got somebody, Captain America. He can teach me how to be that man. You know, so nobody likes me. Nobody's my friend. Nobody cares about me. Am I going to give up and stop being of service? No, Peter Parker would never do that. There so you I go. So don't underestimate the power of the superhero people. There are some lessons to learn, and they're so well written in here. You did such a phenomenal job. Oh, thanks a lot. It was, it was a treat to write, and... It was just a, and I, and you get it. I can see just the way you're talking. You, you got the book. And that's been the challenge for me as an author was to, you know, when you're uh, doing math, when you're in school and they teach you math, they, they teach you how to find the groups that, that correspond yeah. together. You have the two circles that, that touch and you got elements in one circle, elements in another circle, and you got the elements that are common to both circles. That was kind of what I was doing with Lead Like a Superhero. I had to get the, the geek audience who love superheroes. And I had to get the leadership audience who might not love superheroes, who love leadership. And I had to get the people who were in the between, who loved both, who loved leadership, who wanted, who at least wanted to learn about leadership and loved superheroes, or who loved leadership and at least liked superheroes enough to buy a book about superheroes. So it was like that middle ground audience it's been hard for me to, uh, to talk about the book to a specific audience in mind. Wow. But as I've gone through the months following the, pub the publishing of the book, I realized more and more that this is really a book for a younger generation of leaders. Because See, uh, is, I was going to say I'm your demographics and I'm far from young. Maybe because I, I got to tap into the nostalgia of the, the superhero -ness. Well, see, you're, you're kind of like uh, maybe a, a bit uh, margin and margin. Uh, yeah. How can I put this? I don't, yeah. don't let me not, be not your target, target, target audience, but I'm you're, you're close. I'm, no, trust but, me. I, I'm the worst example for you to use. But um, you know what? We're, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not young anymore. I'm, I'm 44. <laughs> and, uh, you know. <laughs> still, I've got toys older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still somewhat young, but, uh, but the thing is, it, it, it was, it, it's kind of tricky. It was tricky to, uh, to present the book to uh, a specific audience. And it was hit or miss, you know, when, when I, whenever I did some uh, Facebook lives or uh, teachings on YouTube or whatnot, uh, sometimes it hit, sometimes it missed. It, it wasn't, uh, it was kind of tricky to get those two types of people, leadership aficionados, and Marvel and DC aficionados to, to, under, to see the link between both and be like, hey, I get this. This is awesome. Well, you just need more props. That's all. Um, Probably. And no, you can't have mine. Um, so final question, sort of, and you can't use Captain America. I'm going to put I my won't. son's rule in place. I can if do this. Be, if you could develop the leadership qualities in the next year of any one of the superheroes, which one would it be? And what is the- I didn't, Did you say in the next year? Yeah, so in 2019, I focused on developing the leadership quality of- <sighs> That's a good question. I get a good uh, one now, man. 
<laughs> I guess I would go with Batman. Ooh. I need to be more focused. Uh, I tend to uh, try to do too much, too many things at once, and, and I'm not narrowed down enough. And I, I, at the same time, at the same time, I talk about this in the chapter on Superman, where uh, there's no such thing as multitasking. Mm -hmm. And I want to I, I wanna be the person who takes one task, crushes it, and on to the next, crush it again, next task, crush it. But I tend to do like a little bit of here, a little bit there, a little bit there. And at the end of the day, it's not productive at all. So uh, I, I got to change that. I, I, so, I have ADHD. <laughs> so, so the Batman will be reborn. The, the Batman is the discipline thing, but I think it goes hand in hand with, uh, you know, when you're doing one task and seeing it through, that's part of discipline. So like there's some some of Superman there and there's some of Batman too. So I, I need to, I guess, do a middle ground of both. So, and then if you get to have one superhero power, which would it be? It, it would be between flight and super strength. <laughs> I, I think I would choose flight. Even Everybody if wants to fly. I, why wouldn't I? <laughs> Because if you can fly, even if you don't have super strength, it gives you it gives you pretty good advantages. Okay, okay. There's super speed too. I didn't think about that. The flash is pretty amazing, and he, all he's got is speed. That could work. Yeah, I like Flash. I like I like all superheroes. So yeah, I, I I can Flash would be like my third, somewhere in my third zone. Wolverine is definitely always my second, um, just because I am. I, I like his, his reflectiveness, his quality of reflectiveness, that sitting on the mountaintop alone, never be a Dr. Strange, just too much learning required to be successful. <laughs> yeah, he, Dr. Strange, see, that's a, good, that's a good example. I could have added that to the book, uh, a Dr. Strange chapter where the learning is all about the superpower. Yeah, and he doesn't learn for any other factor than he just wants to know everything. Yeah, I'm a lot. I'm a lot like that. I, I need to be careful with that. Sometimes it, it veers me off from what I need to do. So, uh, but it's useful. <laughs> well, I so appreciate you spending this time with me on Author Talk, sharing your book, letting me geek out with a fellow leader and a fellow superhero icon lover. Um, I could have probably done this for the next three days, just so you know. Um, I almost brought in my dictionary of superheroes, which is about like this thick. I have this really to. cool book. I know. And it tells how tall they are, when they were born, when they died, when they were reborn, like all of these little tibia facts. It's like bio sheets on each of them. Um, but that's okay. We all need to have a little bit of a hobby, don't we? So that's okay. I, I'm the same way. And, and I, I geek out over stuff like that too. Uh, the, I, I got the Marvel encyclopedia. Uh, actually, it's in the back of me. Do you want to see it? <laughs> yes. I got the Marvel Stanley, Encyclopedia, Stanley, the DC yes. Encyclopedia. <laughs> I do want to see it. Am you I want to see it? Okay, I'm just going to show it to you. upstairs in my son's room because we're reading it together. So here I have... The DC Encyclopedia. Look at the thickness. <sighs> That's a monster sad. of a book. Oh, it's amazing. Like Good stuff in there. Yeah. yeah the That's Joker. the page on the Joker. That... And I also funny. have. Did you notice how carefully he's handling it? I also have the Marvel Encyclopedia. You need to get that on Amazon, by the way. If you're really a geek like you say you are, you're going to love these. They're amazing. I, I, don't, I don't have mine. I'll have to send you a picture of it. It actually just came for Christmas. A friend of mine um, is one of the writers. I, I'm not sure in what capacity, but with Marvel Studios, he's one of the writers. Really? And, so they, and then a fellow friend did the illustration. So it's like, you know... 
Captain America is six foot whatever, weighs 250 pounds. He's in quality. You see their straights and then pictures. So he's, he's really six foot cool. two. He's six two and weighs 240. See, I don't, I'm, not that, I'm not that good at those things. I'm just a kid. <laughs> you're, you're a technician. So are you, beside the podcast, what else are you working on? And if people want to follow you, they can connect. Well, they can connect with us at thrivingonpurpose.com. So that's our Thriving hub. on Purpose. Okay, put that Thriving in, by the way, when we finish, so I get it right. So that's our main hub. Uh, that's where they can sign up to, uh, to get the podcast episodes every week. We, uh, we started again in January. We took a little break in December because we knew that. You're Canadian. Uh, you get time off for like an entire month. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't make any difference here. Up, like, up here, people don't get, they don't work. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we took, a, we took a break for a month. Uh, to recharge our battery and come back in January stronger. So we just started again this week podcasting, but I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, I really fell in love with the medium of podcasting because I, I am an introvert. I do video sometimes. Uh, I, I like engaging with people on video, but it's not my main thing. I'm uh, mostly comfortable in writing. I love to write. I don't get to do it enough. Uh, I'm busy with so many things at once. And like I said earlier, I, would, I really want to get back into uh, crushing one thing at a time and, and, and being more methodical in my approach, uh, my, daily, my daily approach. But uh, writing is definitely on my radar for this year. Uh, there's another book I'm working on, which is kind of weird because I, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I don't want to write books. I don't want to be known as a guy who writes, who writes books on leadership, but my first book was on leadership. Well, actually, it's my second because I have a small Kindle book on, uh, uh, on Kindle, Amazon Kindle that I wrote. Uh, but my first official book was on leadership. And now the one I'm writing again is on leadership. But I just felt, you know, sometimes you just feel compelled to do something. Mm -hmm. So the subject matter was to encourage leaders who might not have followers, but who are nonetheless leaders. So I wanted to, uh, to find a way to encourage these people. And uh, so I'm writing a book about that. And, and I, felt, I felt really like that I had to write this. But at the same time, I told my wife, I said, I don't want to be the leadership guy <laughs> because I'm a faith guy. I, what I like to do, what I really like to do is write uh, books on theology where uh, Christian living and all these things. So if I go too, too far in the leadership genre, then when I go in the faith genre, people are going to, they're going to go like, what, what's he doing? <laughs> no, I, I think, you'll, I, I think you'll be certain. saying, it's not like you're going from Stephen King over to Matthew chapter 12. Yeah. I yeah, think it's you're not, okay as long as you stay kind of in the same character development it's, it's, space. There are some connections for sure. But uh, yeah, so but uh, but this the, this book I'm writing on leadership is uh, it's going to be faith based. Uh, this one, this, it, lead like a superhero, was for a secular and uh, faith based audience. So it didn't really matter whether you believe or not. If you read the book, it's it's more for a secular audience. But the second one is going to be uh, more faith based. So it's going to be for uh, faith based people mostly. Well, I can't wait to read it because you are a really great storyteller. Um, oh, thanks. In your writing style. And as I said, I began the journey of interviewing authors within our community and thinkers. And um, I'm getting really good at reading. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Um, I've noticed. Also you, you read more than I do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, one of these a week is about my average right now. But what I'm realizing is there are great speakers. There are great coaches. There are great writers. Not often do all three arrive in the same place. Your book, all three arrived at the same place. So congratulations. Well, thank yeah. you. Appreciate that very much. Thanks. No and Eric, by the way, I just want uh, to commend you because uh, most people don't know this, but we, we, we've, uh, we've known each other for quite a while. And uh, you were one of the first people who really encouraged me when I, uh, when I first started uh, presenting the book to different audiences online and stuff. You were one of the first persons to, to uh, stop by on my Facebook Live and start commenting. And uh, that's how we got to know each other. And uh, not only that, but you've been a great encouragement in my uh, author journey. You, you've got this, uh, this knack for encouraging people. And uh, I just want to thank you for that. It's been great. Uh, it's great to know you. 
and as uh, it's, it's been uh, ah, very, and, and truthfully well. i was i have been so geeking out about this all week you can tell right it was like a chance to get all my toys out um so i thank you so which superhero best amplifies encourage who's the encouraging superhero I'm trying to think is there a two? superman superman is great i mean there there's a comic say. book there's a comic Wonder book in which uh, he, he, it, it, there's, a, there, there's a comic book in which the story is that he stops by uh, on a roof of a building where this young woman is about maybe, I don't know, 16, 17 years old. She's at the end of her rope. She's been using drugs and she just wants to jump off. And he comes around and takes some time to, uh, to talk to her and to encourage her. And I thought that was one of the most beautiful scenes in comics that I had seen in a long time. I, I don't know which Superman comic, or what number and whatnot, I, I can't. I remember I, I did a video I about know that story. Wow. I'm gonna keep that story. So now I've got like my two characters. I'll have to get me, like, I got my Superman, I got my Captain America. All is good in my world today because I can <laughs> bring up my toys and play. Um, and don't forget, don't forget Wonder Woman. Uh, we didn't talk about her today. But for the ladies out there, like you mentioned, there's two female characters in the list that I picked. And Wonder Woman is the character that I picked that was, uh, of all of the, the whole book, all of the characters can be either gender. I mean, if you're gonna read a chapter on Superman, Batman, or whatever, whether you're male or female, you, you, will, you might identify with the character. But Wonder Woman is the only character that I took that I really wanted to empower women because I think she is all about that and the the whole chapter on the Wonder, Wonder Woman uh, leader is to empower women and I do mention I do mention that if you're a guy and you find you have a lot in common with Wonder Woman that's okay too but it was written specifically for women and I think that makes it uh, and I think you brought it home very well I mean Wonder Woman stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the, the male characters anytime there's a she and, and she does it with her own unique abilities. She doesn't try and copy the men. She doesn't try and become one of the guys. She's like, no, I am who I am who I am, and I'm proud of it. And you're all going to see exactly. just how badass I can be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? A, a little confession time here. The book was written. It was on the market when the movie came out. And I Ooh. went with my wife to see the movie, and I loved it. But at the same time, my heart was bleeding a little bit because I was like, there were so many good examples in the movie that I could have used in the book because she is known as the decisive leader, the leader who makes quick and difficult decisions. Um, so that's in the book, that's who she represents the most. And uh, in the movie, she does that so well, especially in that scene where it's wartime and she's in the trenches and she's like, we got to do something. We got to do something. And they're all scared. And she's like, I'm coming up. And she climbs that ladder. And that's then she goes to the old man's land. And, scene. Oh, man, that scene was amazing. And that showed the decisiveness of the Wonder Woman leader. And for me, that was like, oh, I wish I could have put that in the book. See, everybody's just now got a full-on scale geek out with us. This has been too much fun. <laughs> well, I appreciate you so much. I will speak to you soon. Let me know when the new book on leadership and faith is coming out because I want to make sure I get the first copy because I know I'm going to enjoy it. And again, oh. connecting with you one more time. Thrivingonpurpose.com Thrivingonpurpose.com Make sure you do me a favor and just type it in below because I want to make sure everybody has a way of following up. As they watch this in replay, hit it on the share, hit it on the like, connect with Sebastian Richards, tell him what your favorite superhero is, pick up a copy of the book, you guys. And, you know, it's a great book. I think one of the audience is that 18 to 24-year-old male who's kind of embarrassed to say that he likes superheroes but you're hoping that you'll identify with some of the leadership qualities of them. It's a great graduation book. That's all I'm saying. It's not that far. It's true. Here is. It's true. It, it would make a great graduation. And see, when I wrote the book, sometimes when you're writing a book, it's coming out of you. There's something that's coming out of you. And you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> and that's, I know that sounds kind of bad coming from a coach, right? But 
at the time, I didn't realize that I was basically writing to a younger version of myself what I would have needed to learn from someone to come along and teach me these things. That, and I agree. That's when I was reading, I was like, oh, yeah. It was like, that was so obvious now that I see it. But because I was looking at it from a kid's perspective of the cars blowing up and the flying through the air or turning invisible or whatever it was, I didn't have the ability to layer down one step. Yeah. And that's why I love it now in a nostalgic standpoint. But that's where I'm saying, if you've got that, that you know, that 18 to 25, 30 year old, that's a little like, ah, superheroes, that's for babies, that's for kids, I packed them up. Let me just tell you, if I got all this stuff, there's somebody else that's living in the closet with their superhero stuff. <laughs> it's a great book for them. To closet the superhero fans, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody, I think, you know, we, I was at a conference once and they said, uh, you know how they always start with those icebreakers, tell us one thing about you that nobody else would know right now. And I said, I'm wearing Captain America underwear. And I heard some guys go, me too. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's so, great. So you never know who's in the room wearing Captain America underwear. That's all I can say. Thank you again so much for being part of Author Talk and Success Life Live. It has been my privilege to have you, and I thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege, and thank you, Eric, for having me. I had a great time. I did, too. Have a good night. Goodbye, everybody. See you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern for Success Life Live. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>